Hello, my friends. So this week I learned about web workers, which is actually the JavaScript's ability to do multi-threading. Uh, what is multi-threading? Um, think of the modern operating systems, wherein we can run a C, C Sharp program in one window, also stream live music on another one, uh, while simultaneously working on a Word document. All these processes an operating system can handle with a blob without crashing, without much um, interference between these three different processes, right? Uh, compare that to a human brain, uh, which can only do one single time at, uh, at a stretch. Okay, I know what you're saying, oh, but I can listen to music and still write my code. We can, but it's not 100% concentration that we have on both the tasks. And that's the difference between multi-threading and single threading uh, human brain is single threading it can only do it has only one it has the ability to do only one process at a single time unlike a modern operating system javascript traditionally has been a single threaded uh, language so that means it can only execute one thing at one time i know you might say but promises are a solution to do that uh, not really and we'll see what the difference between web workers and promises are in the course of this video so not wasting much time let's get started so let's see the problem statement on my right in the browser i have a page a pretty straightforward functionality the sum should show the summation of uh, first thirty thousand number the addition uh, then i have some text box where i can type the idea over here is if the screen is not frozen, then I can still be able to type, right? It's a test. Start counting is we will start counting and adding first 30,000 integers on the press of start counting button. And start wire promises that we will be putting that addition code not on JavaScript, main JavaScript function, but in a promise, right? But in both the cases, we will see that the screen does get frozen. Let's go ahead. Let me just clean it up. First, let's see if the problem can be replicated. I start counting, the numbers are getting printed, and I cannot change this. I cannot type anything. I can't even refresh till it, uh, till the whole number, uh, you know, the whole code executes. The refresh also is blocked. Uh, let's have a look at the code. Um, that's my button, that's input and the sum. On click of uh, start count, uh, on click of the button, I, st I call the function start counting. Where are you? Where are you? It's this one, sum, and I start doing the summation, right? So when I click on start counting, I see these numbers coming here, but actually the brain of JavaScript, you know, the single thread of JavaScript is executing my for loop, and that's the reason I was not able to do any changes to the text box. Now, you might say, okay, but uh, promises are the way to, to handle this problem because you can offload these kind of heavy sh lift, uh, heavy lifting work to promises. True, uh, but fundamentally promises are actually delayed tasks. That's, that's how I see them, you know. JavaScript figures out, okay, this is a piece of execution which is not that important immediately to be executed. So I will put it in a back burner, you know, sort of queue, a heap. Uh, I think it's uh, it's a call stack, uh, technically. Uh, they put it over there, and whenever user is not doing anything, whenever he's not clicking here and there, and I'm not raising any events, when I'm free, I will pick up this task and start executing. But once JavaScript does start executing a promise, and if the promise code is long and takes a lot of time, our thread will hang. So let's see that example also quickly. I have my second button. I call in the event handler example promise. That's the function gets called. I create a new promise object, pretty straightforward. That's my counting. And then I resolve and then in the end count it successfully. If uh, promises were async, they're asynchronous, but they're not multi-threaded. If it was multi-threaded, uh, then my screen should not freeze. So let, but let's see, uh, start the promise and I still can't type anything though behind the scene javascript is executing so these are the two promise uh, two examples of the problem we are facing and now let's see how web worker help us in solving it how web worker is actually implemented it's actually an api in javascript 
The idea is any application can call it. For example, in our case, it will be app.js. And the way to talk to web worker to give to, to command web worker to start processing and also to give some input parameters to web worker, maybe there's some data which we would like to pass on is via post message function. Web worker takes that, uh, listens to this post message function, gets the data, does its code execution over here. And then on success, it passes, there raises the on message error, uh, on message uh, event or on the on error event based on if there was an error or not. The calling application, which is app.js, can listen to these two events and then go ahead, um, do its further processing. Of course, on message and on error, there are there are parameters, props, which are being passed. So any custom data can also go from web worker back to app.js. Uh, so let's have a look at the code. That's my application. Now, if I click on web worker counting, I should see some console text, some counters but in this case since it's multi-threaded i should be still be able to type so let's go ahead voila and can i type yes you see it's still counting but i can feel freely type i can even refresh my page if i want and as soon as web worker executes i get my message back fair enough let's have a look at the source code that's my app.js. This is reactive stuff, nothing major. Uh, the meat is over here. That is the API, which is new worker. Uh, this is a JavaScript API. The input is the separate file where web worker code is defined. We will see the code in a minute, but the important thing to keep in mind is that web worker code cannot share the same file, the same JS as the rest of your application because JavaScript needs a completely different process to load that file and then execute it. And uh, that's what I was doing in uh, my case where count workers is a completely separate file, you can see. That's the processing logic. And then whenever web worker processes it, it returns back. It raises the post message object, sends the whatever data it wants to send. And on app.js, I have already defined what should happen on message and on error. And in this case, I'm saying whenever on message is executed, just call the receive message from worker function, which is this one. I get a complete event. There's more data over here, complete event, which you can have a look at it. And then this data is nothing but this thing, which we have specified. And then that's how I'm getting the data and doing my, my stuff. So that's all about web workers. Uh, four important things. The first is that it's an API which runs your code in a multi-threaded environment. It has to be a separate file. It cannot be in the same. You cannot mix your code with the existing uh, web worker code with your existing logic. Uh, uh, there are events, uh, post message, on message, and on error uh, functions which you can tap to send the data back and forth and to communicate with web workers and most importantly it's not the same as promises promises are asynchronous but not multi-threaded so that means they don't run instantaneously but they do run on the same thread of javascript i hope this was clear because i spent a lot of time trying to really understand what was going on and i hope it will save your time uh, and if you like me to do any other video please do let me know in the comment section i'll be more than happy to do so and uh, please hit like share and subscribe your motivation your appreciation is really really needed uh, for me to get going and for the next till the next video bye bye